two sources. One, two. <laughs> Which one would you prefer? Bible. The Bible. <laughs> two sources for us to look at. They say that a minister should preach with both of these, one in each hand, informing the other. Now, I've decided for today that I'm going to let this be our inspiration. You're wondering how that's going to work, I'm sure. <laughs> really? Because it's kind of a tough slog every day when I go through it. I'm going to use this as my inspiration. And I'm going to start at IHOP. Anybody here an IHOP fan? Rudy Tooney, fresh and fruity. I don't order it, but I love to say it. Any place that sells a Rudy Tooney, fresh and fruity, I love it. So it was an IHOP, and it was an average day. And there was a single mom waitress waiting on tables. And a couple came in with their children. And they ate a big breakfast. The bill was about $78. And when they left, they gave her the bill. And they said, open this after we leave. So they left the restaurant. And I see heads nodding that a few of you know what's going on here. So she opened up the check. And she found a tip for how much? $2,020 on a $78 check. That's Donnie Wahlberg and Jenny McCarthy. You may know them from New Kids on the Block and TV shows. And it was big news here because it happened in St. Charles. So it made the newspaper above the fold on Friday in the Daily Herald. 2020. This amazing gift of generosity. So when I look at this book for inspiration, you know, who's the main character that most of us turn to for inspiration in this book? Jesus. Jesus. There are many inspiring characters, but most of the time we look to this book for how we should live our life, and we look at the example of Jesus, and when we're trying to apply his life to ours, we may ask ourselves the question, some people wear it on their, their little bracelets, what do we ask? What would Jesus do? And now we can ask, what would Donnie Wahlberg do? <laughs> See, we can find inspiration anywhere if we really look. And that story, maybe because it happened in St. Charles, and I could probably go sit in that IHOP. It's around the corner from where Doug lives, and he's going to start hanging out there more too now. <laughs> They're not hiring. I checked. They're not hiring. They're not hiring. Yeah. Everyone wants to work there now where the Wahlbergs live. But I was really inspired by that story, and it's really kind of stuck with me ever since I read about it, that incredible act of generosity. And it affected me as I was working on my talk this week about a brand new year and a brand new you. So there are a whole bunch of things were happening this week, one of which was, okay, I read that very inspiring story. And then, of course, I read what's happening over in Iraq and Iran, and Every couple of hours, I'm looking at my phone, wondering if we're at war. And then I'm working on a sermon about how to inspire everybody with all these things going on. And it's the new year. It's a new decade. And resolutions come up. I get this little ding on my new Apple Watch that I got for Christmas. And it's from my husband. It says, goals and resolutions discussion today. Oh, really? Goals and resolutions? Does that make your heart sing? No. <laughs> So, I'm like, oh yeah, okay, it is that time. How many of you make resolutions? About eight of us. <laughs> Not a lot, okay? All right, and I've tried to trick this brain by calling them New Year's affirmations, but my brain is not fooled. I know what you're doing. This is about what you didn't do last year that you're going to do this year. Because I look back on my New Year's resolutions, you know, so it's like, okay, what's the first one that most people write down? Lose weight. Lose weight, number one resolution, I think, in the world for every year. I'm going to lose 20 pounds. Last year was 15. The year before it was 10. The year before that it was 5. Okay, so I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to quit smoking. I'm going to work less. I'm going to work harder. And in a lot of those things, I feel a little bit of judgment. Anybody else? Just a little bit of judgment that I didn't do it right. I didn't do great in 2019, but this is the year I'm going to get it right. And so do I look at the newspaper or do I look at the Bible? Who do I look to for inspiration? 
And as I was working on my talk, an interesting thing happened. Once again, my watch went off, and it was a phone call, or it was a text, rather, from somebody telling me that their mom couldn't call me back because she had just had a treatment with some shots and she was in so much pain that she couldn't even text at that time. And it made me stop all of the busyness and the writing and, and all of the reading and, and the work of writing a sermon. And so I said, you know what? Whenever someone wants me to pray for them, I lay a candle. So I'm gonna stop working right now. So I've got my phone and I, I'm okay, I'm so sorry, I'm praying for mom and I'm gonna light a candle. And the candle that I have on my altar right now is this Jesus candle. A couple of Buddhas, and then, you know, I was at Jewel one day, and I'm like, I need something Jesus on my altar. So I bought the grocery store Jesus candle. It's a very sacred object in my house. And um, you, you might not be able to see it, but it's got like this diamond heart, and it's exploding out, and, and this, you know, beautiful face. And so I lit the candle, and I'm, I'm looking at it with, you know, all my papers, spread around me, and I realized how, you know, in that moment, I stopped and did what was important. It wasn't about writing the rest of my talk, so the rest of my talk's gonna not be very good, because I was busy focusing on that game. I got back to that. But this face, you know, was looking at me, and I was like, wow, resolutions and Jesus. So I get on Google, what did Jesus say about New Year's Eve resolutions? Nothing. <laughs> I was really, the word resolution doesn't really come up in the Bible, but it's like, okay, I, obviously I know that there is inspiration here. Because there's a new beginning all the time. So I can use many different things, even if Jesus wasn't, you know, at the burning bowl ceremony on New Year's Eve to tell me what to focus on. But it was looking at that face and then all these amazing connections when you're in prayer. You know, things just start pinging off of each other. And I thought, I need to turn my resolutions inside out. I'm focusing on the wrong thing here. I'm focusing on the outer world, what I'm going to get, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to fix. And I'm not really looking inside of myself. What's the motivation here? Why do I want to do these things? There's some kind of peace or something that I'm looking for. So I thought, well, what if I start with Jesus <laughs> instead of looking to it later? Like, this should be first and foremost in my resolutions. Not, I gotta get down to business. I gotta, I gotta get my life right this year. What if I've been doing it right? And it's just that there's something more ready to be born. Because I love to say, a first grader is not a broken second grader. A first grader didn't do it wrong because they didn't do second grade. It wasn't time for second grade. It's just a natural graduation and evolution to second grade. So it's my natural evolution from 2019 to 2020. Nothing was wrong. What am I going to do? What do I want it to be about? And how do I turn my resolutions inside out? And I thought, okay, you're planning a year here. I want this to be the year of, of what? And I thought, oh, this can be the year of living Jesusly. Did you get it? Yeah. Jesusly. Not dangerously, not brilliantly. Not this is the year of living Jesusly, like Donnie Wahlberg is doing. If he can do it, I can do it. And as I reflected on some of the amazing things that inspire me from the teacher Jesus, I turn to a couple of important passages for me. One of my favorites, Roman 12, 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is a seminal scripture in unity. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I kind of like that. King James language sometimes, don't you? Be ye, nobody talks that way. Oh, hey, Sally, be ye transformed. <laughs> <laughs> but be, it feels different, you know. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then, of course, Google gives us so many other things to consider. It gives you all these other translations. We usually use the new revised standard, NRSV. 
And then there's the King James that most of us know. And then I stumbled upon one I don't read called the New Living Translation. Try this one on. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Doesn't that feel relevant? David likes it. Wow, that one really spoke to me. And then here's another one from the contemporary English version. Don't be like the people of this world, but let God change the way you think. I like that version. Don't be like the people of the world, except the Donnie Wahlbergs of the world. Don't be like the people of the world, but get in touch with that spiritual part. Let God, spirit, something higher, change your mind. Ah, now that is a New Year's resolution, going from the inside out. It's not about what I'm going to do that appeals out into the world, but what feels good in here. And from 2 Corinthians, verse 5, 17. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. In Christ, in an understanding of our true spiritual nature, we are new. Everything is new. At the beginning of the year, let me embrace that. The Christ nature with my candle looking straight at me. Okay, so I've got Jesus, I've got Donnie Wahlberg, I've got Myrtle Fillmore. Oh, Myrtle Fillmore. And I remembered she wrote a whole chapter on how to celebrate New Year's Eve. So the Bible didn't cover it, but Myrtle did. <laughs> this is what Myrtle Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, said. For New Year's, the very word new gives a welcome because there is something in the makeup of us that craves the freshness that this word suggests. We're wired for New Year's Day. We're wired for what's new. So why not give the word new a place every day? It's a brand new day every day. Why not on first awakening remind ourselves that this is a fresh new day full of opportunities and fragrant with possibilities? Now that's a bumper sticker. <laughs> Fragrant with possibilities. <laughs> Feel the excitement of something new. And the restrictions of yesterday have no power to overshadow our lives today. There is our power of elimination. We let go of the shadows from yesterday and we begin with newness. And then she goes on to say, the newing process comes first in mind and then she quotes the Bible be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. Myrtle and I on the same page. That is a scripture for the new year. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I realized that I had a couple of tools in my spiritual toolbox to help me do that that were different from how I've done my resolutions in the past. And I realized, here it is over here, and this would be a new way for me to do my New Year's affirmations. And so I've shared it with you in your bulletin if you want to pull out the 12 powers. How many of you have seen these before? Almost every hand should go up. All right. So the 12 powers. And what I decided was instead of a resolution about here's what I'm going to do, a resolution about how I want to be in the world. Now what I'm going to do or accomplish, that can come later, but the first thing we do is we shift our consciousness. We settle in and we realize where am I coming from? Who do I want to be this year? How do I want to be this year? And what comes from that will flow naturally. And you'll see how they can come together as we move through this. <coughs> so I decided that maybe there are a couple of powers that I want to bring forth consciously this year. Consciously create from the 12 powers, which are your divine attributes. These all are in you already, but 12 is a lot. You can't focus on 12 things at once. You can 
focus on one, two, three, and for the overachievers in the room, yeah. maybe four. <laughs> so I'm going to lead you through a brief meditation where I'm just going to say each word. And without thinking about it, as you look at this, oh yeah, you know, I need some zeal this year, I gotta get, no. Let spirit speak through you as I read each word. Find out which one sparks you, gives you a tingler. Without explanation, you don't know why that's your word, but that's your word, or two, or three. So if you want to gently close your eyes, if that's comfortable, and have a pen ready, there are some in the pockets. If you don't have one, otherwise, find a woman with a big purse. She may have three or four. She might lend you one. And what we're going to do, and I, I, I see um, people who want to reach with pens. There we go. Great. You don't need glasses. This is like 20-point type, so I think you can read it. And as I read each one, when the one or two just circle watch, jives for you. All right? And so here we are. The 12 powers in front of us. What power is wanting to come forth from me this year? Life. Imagination. Power. Strength. Judgment, understanding, zeal, elimination, faith, love, order, will. And we'll say them again. The power of life. The power of imagination. Power of power, the power of strength, the power of judgment or wisdom, the power of understanding, the power of zeal or energy, the power of elimination or release, the power of faith. The power of love, the power of order, the power of will. Everybody get one or two or three? Yes, yes. All right. Now, phase two. Pull out your funny little card here. We had some index cards in the supply closet, and then I saw all of these Rolodex cards, and I thought, well, these are never going to get used. Is there even a Rolodex anymore in this world? So we're going to make use of this paper before we recycle it. So you have a funny-looking Rolodex card. This should be at the front of your Rolodex deck at home. And what you can do then is take the word, the first, each one, and if you, I, I did two on each one. I have four. I admit it. I'm an overachiever. So, you know, love, imagination, and then leave space. And then on the other side, write the other third or fourth one. So there will be some space to write. So just write your four different words or your one or three words, leaving some space to write next to it. Now this next part, you don't have to do it here today. You might just leave this as sort of a blank canvas for you, that these are the powers. It's enough right now to know that these are the qualities and the attributes that you want your year to be about. These are yours for the year. And of course, it can change throughout the year. And what I discovered is when I put these words together with those old-timey resolutions that I wrote, that they connected, but now they connect in a deeper way. And let me show you how. So the top resolutions of lose weight, you know, quit a bad habit, or get something done, like finish the novel, finish the basement, finish something. Those are kind of three standards. And so my first power that jumped out at me was imagination. And so I have been stuck trying to finish a play that I started, and I've been stuck by not auditioning for a show. So I wrote down imagination, and then I realized, ah, for me, expressing imagination means doing a play and working on the one I started to write. And now it feels positive. Now it doesn't feel like a to-do. Now it feels like, oh, this is how I'm going to express this quality this year. 
Then my next one was power, the power of power. And that's about speaking your truth. And so I just wrote, I will speak truth in all situations. Then judgment, which is also known as wisdom. That one tied in with a financial goal that I had written down, that I will continue in the financial peace program that I started with Dave Ramsey. And I want to get back to that. And what I realized is, again, instead of, oh, I haven't been doing enough with that, it was, I'm going to use wisdom with my finances. And now again, that feels powerful. Instead of someone saying, I'm going to get out of debt, I'm going to save that money, I'm going to pay off that bill, I'm going to give generously, I am going to make wise use of my resources. And then finally, I had love. And I said, I am going to love my body this year. Period. The end. There's no number assigned to it. There's no particular goal. But it's about a feeling and how I want to be in the world. So see if you look at yours, if there is maybe one that jumps out at you that you can easily connect to an action. I want to be more love in the world, and this means blank. I will pray every day. I will send a card to someone when they're sick. There's all sorts of ways you can express it. So trust that whatever power came up for you has some way of demonstrating it in the world that's going to make you feel good. Yeah, and then at the end of the year, you'll look back and you'll say, I lived like Jesus this year. It was the year of living Jesusly. I was imaginative. I was loving, I was powerful, and I was filled with divine order. I <clears throat> imagine a world where everybody starts the year with that kind of a to-do list and ends the year and we all say, wow, I was more loving, I was more peaceful, I was more joyful this year. And oh, along the way I finished a novel or I cleaned out the basement. That's great. But what we really want to hear is that these qualities are coming forth. And then there was one last guru that I stumbled upon in my research. So we went from Donnie to Jesus to Myrtle. And I found something from Charles that I'd never seen before. Charles Fillmore, our other co-founder. And especially this week with how we're looking at, you know, will we be at war, what's going on in the world, it's a challenging time. There's a lot of depression, people worrying, I hear it all the time. It does feel like a crazy kind of time. And I found this Christmas letter from 1947, Charles Fillmore. There's a copy of it out on the board if you want to look at it. It's on this adorable stationery that I wish I could get today. And it's written in his own handwriting from December 1947. I cannot read his handwriting, so I will read the portion of it that I printed. And so as we think about turning our resolutions inside out and living a different way, when things are a little bit scary, perhaps Charles has something to say. Dear folks, at the beginning of this letter, I was warned, but let your speech be yay, yay, and nay, nay. There are so many things I would like to discuss with you. Explanation point. What does the Lord say about the signs of our times? Will there be another war? How about the prophets who say that our civilization is about to end, etc.? Frankly, I have no direct revelation on any of these points. I only know that our God who controls this world through his people is greater and far more powerful than all the destructive forces in the universe. And that if only a few of us stand steadfastly for truth and righteousness, they will prevail. And our civilization will go right, formed to its fulfillment in the millennium. United in this truth, we shall have a Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. In the unity of spirit, yours faithfully, Charles Fillmore. At a scary time, he knew and he reminds us 
through living the 12 powers, through turning these resolutions inside out and letting this be the year that you live Jesusly, that we will prevail, that more good will come forward because I'm looking at a whole room full of people who are ready to do that. And so I'm going to get a bracelet, and instead of what would Jesus do or what would Donnie do, I'm going to ask, what will my congregation do? I can't wait to see what 2020 brings. Happy New Year. Bless you. I invite now into a time of meditation, a time when you can relax, as the Daily Word has invited us to do. And if it's comfortable for you to gently close your eyes, to avoid any distractions, you can do that now. Or if you feel a little sleepy, you may choose to keep your eyes just slightly open with a gaze on something in front of you. We set the body so the mind can relax and spirit can come forward. I now relax and let go. I may notice that there's tension somewhere in my body and I can choose to let that go. I enter into this inner world now. is peace and love and comfort of every kind. And where there is also energy and joy. I tap into all that spirit is. I tap into my personal connection with God. I'm able to simply bask in this connection with all that is divine, mighty, and powerful. I'm automatically connected. Each breath centers me more, pulling me back to the true me, open, relaxed, a time to rest. I rest from the outer and come into this inner world to be energized, soothed all my needs are met I feel the power of connection to everyone here in this room connecting and holding space
I am grateful. I am filled with love and joy. I have been blessed by this time. This time to stop, to go away for a moment, and to remember my connection. And as I move forward, I can recall this feeling at any time. Remember, this is the truth of me in all things. And so it is. Amen.